in working with families with ADHD children, and let me say high school specifically, ages 15 and up, um, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, selectively 9th grade. And I do family support. So I coach mostly with the high schooler and the parents are updated, involved, right? It's a group effort. What keeps popping up is as parents, of course, we want to plug our brains in to our children and be like, hey, please hear everything. Please feel everything I've experienced so that it will be hopefully a little easier for you. Um, that's, that's a very normal, like I, I don't know any parent who doesn't feel that way. <laughs> please learn from me. I don't want you to suffer the way I did. I wanna lay out a smoother path for you than what I had. And I know there, that's not every parent, but that's, okay, that's what we're talking about. It's very normal. What I see very quickly is, especially when the teenager uh, is neurodivergent, has ADHD, some other assessment I work with ADHDers. The, in high school, everything ramps up. The pressure ramps up. Hey, now we're thinking about college. Hey, this really does matter. Your grades really do matter. Um, we want to have all these opportunities laid out for you. Um, we want you to have friends and build your network. And it all makes sense. It all makes sense. This is a time where the teenager is growing up, experiencing, hopefully, wanting more independence, jockeying for position in their world. Parents, we're kind of forced to start letting go in some ways, which is really scary, especially when driving enters the picture. It's this time where the whole family's emotions are amplified. It feels like there's more on the line. It feels like there's more pressure. It feels like there's more, this is gonna dictate or affect the rest of their lives. And all of that is amplified. So it makes sense why this time of parenting in high school <laughs> is challenging. All of parenting's challenging, y'all. It's challenging time. And the teenager is thinking about this stuff too. So instead of, instead of us as parents continuing to try to plug into our kids and please feel my hurts and please hear this from me Please know that this was my experience and I want it to be better for you. The switch is to, yes, that may be some stuff that you have. We all have it. But let's flip that in terms of showing up for our kids, connecting with our teenagers, supporting them truly in their life's experience, is to meet them where they are. This is not a rocket science idea, right? But how do you actually do that? It's recognizing that even if you could plug in your experiences to them, their experience is not your experience. The world has changed. Since I was in high school, 25 years, I have a high schooler. The world has changed really quickly. And yo, the pandemic, that really changed everything. My child did not go through middle school the same way I went through middle school. It was virtual, it was weird, we thought the world was ending, like all of that needs to be taken into account. <laughs> what is not different is how can we connect with our child, regardless of all of that. Our lived experience is not their lived experience. And while some of that, of course, is helpful, what is most helpful and truly supportive to them and being a trusted safe space is to meet them where they are and open the door and say, hey, I'm your parent, I'm always gonna worry about you. I wish I could plug in all my stuff so that you can learn from it, but that isn't really how it works. So help me understand what you're experiencing right now. Let me into your world. I'm a safe space. What are you experiencing? What are you worried about? What are you stressed about? What feels heavy to you? What are you excited about? Like what is going well? Um, this does not all happen in one conversation. This is setting a tone. 
And the way that we can show up for our kids that way is to take care of ourselves and know, okay, is this my worry because of my experiences or is this my worry because I think I'm seeing things with my child that could trip them up? Like what, only way you can know what is happening with your high schooler is, is to connect with them. And you can connect with them and open that door. They probably are not gonna just run through it. <laughs> it may take some consistency there. But a lot of times when you open that door, like these, these kids, these young adults, these teenagers, they need that. And if they can find that in their parent, that's incredible. So that support for them, how you can show up for them in this crazy space, this, this weird time between, you know, you're not a child, but you're not an adult, but all of a sudden the grades seem to matter more and you have to think about your future and starting to drive and getting a job and like what, what is their experience of all of that coming at them? What do they have in their head? What expectations are they putting on themselves? That's a lot. And so we can support them by meeting them where they are. And that means handle your stuff. <laughs> and that doesn't mean hide it. That means try not to let your anxieties and worries and heavy stuff from your life, try not to put that on them and just open, open your ears, open your heart, know that their lived experience is not yours, it is their own. And they may be feeling really high pressure. They're probably also feeling afraid of letting you down, afraid of disappointing you. And they're jockeying for position in their own world. And if you're the safe space, if you're truly a support for that, and they can share what they're experiencing without judgment, you know, this is all easier said than done, but I'm hoping that framing it in this way gives you something you can take action on and a change in your communication. And when we realize, oh, I'm bringing all of my stuff to this relationship with my child, I am the grown up. I want to be their parent. I want to be their support. I want them to know they can always come home, whatever that means. The best way to do that is to meet them where they are and get into their world and find out what they're experiencing. Find out how they're feeling. It may surprise you and it often doesn't take a lot for these teenagers to then share with their parents when they feel supported or share with someone who opens that door for them. Again, they may not come running through it, especially depending on what dynamic has been up to this point. But as the parent, how do you want to show up? It may mean tabling your stuff or then finding your own path to work through that if it is really heavy in your life that I would recommend therapy. If you think you have ADHD, if you think there are some neurodivergent um, tendencies, find a therapist who is informed because it is different. The brain works different, the feelings are bigger. Um, yeah, so someone who can specialize in that. That may be work that you need to do for yourself and maybe now's the time to do it. It's amazing what our teenagers, what our kids, but especially in those teenage years, it's amazing what that reflects back to us about ourselves. And the recognition that they're living in a different time. We're our experience was not the same. But again, the common, the common shared experience here is that life can start to feel really heavy and really high pressure. So how can we support our teenager in that time when they're probably feeling like this just got all really real and I'm freaking out? How can you meet them there? Probably not when I was your age. <laughs> probably not going to do it. Okay. So ask them 
show them, tell them they're, if they roll their eyes, that's okay. It doesn't mean it's not getting in. They're going to need the consistency that you actually want to hear what they have to say, that you actually care about what they're experiencing, that you actually are going to try to understand what it's like for them. And when you can get that going, like, oh, that's incredible. You are their parent. They have expectations tied to that too. So how are you showing up for them? This is not easy stuff. And it is the really important stuff. So if you have a teenager, any age child, but I work with teenagers, high schoolers, families, support, especially with ADHD. These are things that can help them really get through this time and, and handle this time with support of still being in your home that can set them up for their adulthood, for their independent living situation, for whatever they choose to do moving forward. That can happen now and in high school, like it is, it's a big time for everybody. So it makes sense that all of this feels elevated and you as a parent may feel more triggered. It's probably gonna reveal some things about maybe how you feel about where you are in your life is not what you thought when you were in high school. Maybe, oh, I had all these ideas when I graduated and it just didn't go that way. Like it's a reflection time and it makes sense then why everything feels so amplified and elevated. So working with families, I love seeing these things happen pretty quickly and then figuring out how, how are we going to support the teenager um, to grow their independence, to grow their confidence, to amplify their support with their parents, with their family, um, whatever definition of that that is, you know, their people, who is their support, who are their support people. Um, yeah, it's amazing. So if this was interesting to you, follow your stuff. If you use any of this, if you try any of it, please share with me. Please share with me privately. You don't have to comment on here, all open. <laughs> but this is where it's at. Meet your kids, meet your teenagers where they are. Put your stuff to the side and handle that if you need to. Also showing your kids that you are gonna take care of yourself, that matters. That matters. Be their role model, truly. How do you show up for your kids as a role model? That sh helps shift my perspective too, big time. I wanna role model my life. I'm not gatekeeping. I go to therapy once every couple months now, but I used to go very regularly. Didn't start till I was 40 years old. My teenager knows that. Pretty much anyone in my life knows that. So give that support dynamic. Take care of you so you can show up as the parent you want to be to them and truly support them and meet them where they are. Because most teenagers, they need somebody. They might kick and scream. They might not realize that that's what's going on. But when you open that door, I want to understand what you're experiencing. I want to understand what is stressing you out. I want to understand how things are going for you. Are you worried about future? Are you not really thinking about it? And it's just open. There's no expectations on it. It's to facilitate that communication and whatever they share, you've got to be able to take that without launching into back in my day, <laughs> right? Be the safe space. And then if you need additional support for yourself as an adult to work through some things that may be getting reflected to you right now, therapy. Okay. The reward is, is incredible when you can meet your teenager where they are. Okay. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Relationships matter most. And it starts with you and how you choose to show up for your different relationships and that takes work on your part. And the reward is incredible. Okay, be you, do you, have a great day.